students, this is the third lecture uh, on the heat flow in welding and this lecture will be based on the cooling rate and its effect on the performance of the weld joint. We will also talk about that how cooling rate can be calculated in the weld uh, zone and the areas close to the fusion boundary. Uh, we know that in the fusion arc welding processes, heat is applied with the help of arc for melting the fin surfaces. Once the heat is applied for melting purpose, the solidification takes place. So, during the solidification, the heat is extracted from the weld region as well as from the regions close to the weld uh, zone. And because of this, uh, the different cooling rates are experienced by the, the different locations in the weld region as well as in the heat affected zone. Uh, we have learned from the weld thermal cycle uh, that the weld thermal cycle of the each location is found to be different and the cooling rate uh, at a particular uh, uh, location uh, will be the function of the time as well as will be the function of the temperature. So, the role of uh, uh, the cooling rate and uh, the methods used for calculating the cooling rates and its uh, applications will be uh, presented in this uh, lecture mainly. As far as content is concerned, in this uh, presentation we will be talking about the need of studying the cooling rate, significance of cooling rate in the welding, cooling rate equations, classification of the thick and thin plates because these cooling rate equations are different for uh, the, uh, the different uh, thicknesses means the plates of the different thicknesses and uh, how to calculate uh, the critical cooling rate under the welding conditions and uh, what are the different applications of the cooling rate equations in the welding. So, um, we know that uh, uh, heat uh, affected zone and the weld region are subjected to the different cooling rates during the welding and uh, the cooling rate uh, being experienced by the material at each location is found to be different. Um, it is important to uh, calculate and to find out the cooling rate at a particular location so that it, it can be controlled in a proper way. Otherwise, it can lead to have some undesirable effect because cooling rate dictates the soundness of the weld metal, uh, especially in respect of the porosity, inclusion and the weld bead geometry. Uh, we know that the cooling rate directly affects the time available for the solidification. And so, if uh, uh, under the conditions of the high cooling rates, the solidification time will be less. And in the in case of the short, very short solidification time, uh, there will be chances for the entrapment of the gases leading to the development of the porosity as well as uh, the in impurities which are uh, present in the well region forming the slag in if uh, they are not able to come up to the surface of the molten metal, then they will be uh, present in form of the inclusions. Uh, similarly, if uh, the very less amount of the heat is available with the weld metal, then it will be leading uh, to the reduced fluidity of the weld metal and uh, the weld bead will be very peaked kind. And this uh, peaked beads uh, frequently leads to the highest stress concentration uh, and uh, cause uh, the premature failure of the weld joints under the fatigue load conditions. So, um, the flatness uh, of the bead or the be weld bead profile uh, is affected by the, uh, the cooling rate uh, uh, being experienced by the weld metal during the uh, so, uh, solidification. Apart from the soundness of the weld joint, uh, the cooling rate also affects the mechanical properties and uh, the metallurgical structure. Uh, because of the variation in the metallurgical structure in the weld region and the heat affected zone, uh, the variation in the mechanical properties as well as corrosion behavior has been observed. Uh, since uh, due to the direct, direct effect of the cooling rate on the metallurgical structure in and around the weld zone, the mechanical properties in form of the hardening and embrittlement of the hardenable steel is noticed. And because of this, uh, the, it, is, uh, uh, it is frequently desired to have the controlled cooling rate, especially in the heat affected zone so that the metallurgical structure can be controlled in our favor in order to avoid any such kind of the embrittlement or the excessive hardening of the heat affected zone, so that cracking tendency can be avoided. Further, in some of the steels like stainless steels, osmotic stainless steels, uh, where uh, the chromium carbide formation takes place in the heat affected zone under the slow cooling conditions, 
uh, in, in, in a sensitive temperature range that leads to the loss of the corrosion resistance of even of the stainless steel. So, to avoid such kind of unfavorable metallurgical structures in the heat affected zone, uh, uh, the heat uh, cooling rate is also controlled. Uh, that uh, control is made in form of the faster cooling uh, through the uh, sensitive temperature range where the chromium carbide precipitation can take place. So, uh, the cooling rate in the heat affected zone can affect the metallurgical structures which can influence the mechanical properties as well as the corrosion behavior. Because of these things, it is uh, bec it becomes important to uh, understand the kind of cooling rate which will be experienced by the weld zone and the heat affected zone. So, uh, the, the things that affect the cooling rate uh, the, and how the methodologies which are used for calculating the cooling rate in uh, during the welding of uh, the plates of the different thicknesses will be uh, focused in this presentation. So, this is what we have seen that uh, we have already discussed uh, that uh, the final structure in of the weld zone and the heat affected zone is primarily determined by the cooling rate uh, and this cooling rate uh, actually varies with the uh, temperature of a particular location and uh, this cooling rate also varies with the, uh, the temperature at a particular moment of the time uh, from the uh, uh, from the well thermal cycle, we know that uh, the cooling rate being experienced by a particular location uh, varies as a function of time and as a function of the temperature. To understand this, we will uh, focus in this uh, diagram here, we can see that uh, if, if we have a weld joint, uh, if there is, uh, is a plate which is being welded by the fusion arc welding process uh, by applying the heat and melting of the fing surfaces and the weld is being made like this. So, the kind of the weld metal or the weld portion. So, the reason close to uh, this weld zone will be uh, uh, a heat affected zone or the region which is uh, being affected by the application of the heat uh, to the fang surfaces. So, in this heat affected zone, uh, uh, if we plot uh, the weld thermal cycle of any point, then we will see that as a function of time, uh, the temperature varies and this variation in temperature uh, during the heating phase, it increases very abruptly and then uh, in cooling phase, it comes down gradually. So, if we notice this, uh, this is steepness becomes more at the higher temperature and then it will keep on decreasing. So, basically this, this slope uh, uh, becomes uh, of the decreasing kind indicating that the, uh, the slope is more here at the upper level and this slope will keep on decreasing. Here at this location say the slope has reduced, the slope indicates the cooling rate. So, at the higher temperature. Uh, the cooling rate will be high, while at the lower temperatures cooling rate will be low. We know that the different locations are subjected to the different peak temperatures. So, accordingly the different locations will be subjected to the different cooling rates also. So, if we consider this location and this location, then the cooling rate experienced by the region very close to the well will be subjected to higher cooling rate as compared to the location which is uh, away from the fusion boundary. So, uh, these uh, uh, variation in cooling rates uh, will be leading to the difference in the um, metallurgical structure of uh, the hardenable steels particularly. Uh, so, these cooling rates are controlled in such a way in heat affected zone that the favorable structures are formed. So, that unnecessary embrittlement of the heat affected zone can be avoided in case of the hardenable steels. Uh, the cooling rates uh, above a particular temperature is of the great importance in case of the hardenable steels where a cooling rate uh, determines the final structure uh, of the heat affected zone and uh, uh, on the mechanical properties of the weldment. So, here to understand this we can see this diagram here uh, we say uh, the all the regions in the plain carbon steel which are heated above the 730 degree centigrade that is above this line uh, they will be in the austenitic state. 
uh, this is basically the uh, triple T diagram time temperature transformation diagram where we have superimposed cooling rate lines. So, these different lines are corresponding to the different cooling rates. So, uh, the lower is the slope low will be indicating the lower cooling rate. So, under this kind we know that uh, since the, is, uh, 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 the is steel will be in the austenitic state above the 730 degree centigrade for this particular form of steel say it is eutectoid steel and uh, when uh, the temperature uh, when the steel uh, is subjected to the slow cooling rate then we will be able to see that the as soon as the temperature uh, say for this cooling rate as soon as the temperature comes down below this uh, the green line the transformation starts. So, the, this green line corresponds, corresponds to the transformation start and this uh, the black line corresponds to the uh, transformation end. So, here along this uh, between these uh, two lines we will be having the, trans, uh, the, the transformation zone uh, for austenite to the perlite uh, transformation and uh, this uh, uh, under these slow cooling conditions basically we get uh, the very coarse perlite because each uh, this uh, transformation occurs very gradually and uh, very uh, slow nucleation takes place under these conditions and because of this uh, whatever grains are nucleated they will be growing to the larger extent and will be resulting into the very coarse perlite. If we see here another cooling rate we according to this cooling rate uh, the, the transformation of austenite will be starting at this uh, point and into the perlite and then again it will be completing at this point will be uh, but in this case uh, due to the uh, higher cooling rate which is being uh, applied through the air cooling typical still air cooling in the ambient conditions uh, the the uh, the structure of the perlite will be the finer one so the difference in these two cooling rates is one is being applied through the furnace cooling and the second is being applied through the still air cooling in the ambient condition so in one case first case will be getting the coarse perlite in the second case will be getting the uh, the fine perlite if we uh, uh, if we follow the another uh, temperature line uh, that is corresponding to this nose we are just crossing this uh, nose uh, portion of the diagram and after reaching to this uh, we are holding it at a constant temperature then this will be resulting in the bainite uh, so here austenite will be transforming into uh, the bainite so here we will have upper and the uh, lower bainite uh, situations so here above this will be getting the upper bainite and below this here we will be getting the lower bainite further if we don't hold this uh, uh, means after cooling at this rate and then holding at this particular temperature uh, it will be leading to the development of the uh, bainite and uh, if we <coughs> if we avoid this uh, uh, if we keep on cooling at that constant rate say like this uh, using this uh, uh, the pink line then we will be able to have that austenite is transforming into the martensite. So, uh, the martensitic transformation in case of steels will be occurring in both these two cooling rates. So, here this is achieved uh, by the oil quenching or the water quenching. Oil quenching results in somewhat lower cooling rates as compared to the water quenching, but in both the cases austenite will be cooled uh, means steel will be cooled in the aust from the austenitic state to the very low temperatures and will be resulting in the transformation into the martensite. So, again here we have the martensite start and martensite finish temperature conditions. So, when the quenching is done below the martensite finish temperature conditions uh, the whole of the austenite austenite transforms into the martensite and whenever a steel forms the martensite we get a, a very hard and brittle structures with the comp, uh, with the tensile residual stresses and because of this uh, it still has the cracking tendency and in the weld joint it is very common to have the cooling rates corresponding to these two lines where uh, the where the cooling rates are much higher than the cooling rates required for having the soft phases like the bainite and the uh, perlite or uh, uh, fine or the coarse perlite. So, um, in the steels uh, which are hardenable in nature uh, because of the existence of these higher cooling rates then the, the critical cooling rate required to the formation of the uh, from the austenite to the martensite uh, 
uh, uh, it is uh, frequently observed that um, uh, the heat affected zone in the hardenable steel forms the martensite and the formation of this martensite leads to the embrittlement of uh, uh, the weld joint. So, to avoid this brittle embrittlement and the cracking tendency it becomes necessary to avoid these higher cooling rates in the steels so that the cracking tendency can be avoided. So, if we see here if you want to avoid the cracking tendency it becomes necessary to have somewhat softer phases so that uh, uh, the uh, so that reasonably good strength can be obtained without having the cracking tendency and the excessive hardening of the heat affected zone and to achieve these different cooling rates during the um, uh, welding um, where uh, invariably high cooling rates are observed uh, the preheating uh, is applied so uh, we know that uh, the welding conditions significantly affect the cooling rate being experienced by the material at a particular location and these uh, the uh, these uh, um, uh, these parameters or these uh, uh, the input conditions during the welding that affect the cooling rate are uh, primarily the heat input which is being applied for uh, the welding purpose and the initial plate temperature before the welding so heat input in general when we increase the heat input the cooling rate is reduced while the low heat input results in the higher cooling rate. Similarly, on the other hand increase in the preheat temperature uh, generally causes uh, the reduction in the cooling rate and uh, 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 therefore, uh, the preheating of the plate is frequently uh, performed to avoid the critical cooling rate conditions and so as to avoid the martensitic transformation uh, in the heat affected zone to avoid the cracking tendency and the embrittlement of the heat affected zone. Uh, this is the diagram which shows uh, that the cooling rate being experienced uh, by the different uh, locations varies with the uh, uh, time and uh, the temperature. So, if we see here the location which is far away from the uh, weld line the weld thermal cycle is this and if we see the, this slope of the cooling portion of the weld thermal cycle this uh, the slope of uh, this curve is somewhat lower as compared to this one. So, this suggests that the cooling rate being experienced by the location A will be much higher than that of the location B and further we can see the slope at the higher temperatures of the cooling portion of the weld thermal cycle are higher than the slope of the curve at the lower temperatures and at very low temperature all these slopes becomes almost equal to the each other means the cooling will be occurring at very slow, very slow rate uh, when, the, uh, when the temperature comes down to uh, almost uh, close to the room temperature conditions. So, weld thermal cycle indicates uh, and that the cooling rate varies as a function of the peak temperature of a particular location at the time uh, and the time and the cooling rate calculations for the heat affected zone of the hardenable steel mostly uh, done at the 550 degree centigrade. We know that uh, since the cooling rate varies with the temperature uh, at high temperature cooling rate will be high but the temperature which is of the great importance is uh, of the 550 that is correspond to, corresponding to the nose of the continuous cooling diagram or the triple T diagram because it decides the cooling rate which will help to either avoid uh, the martensitic transformation or to have the soft phases like bainite and the perlite. So, that uh, the temperature correspond the corresponding to the nose of the continuous cooling uh, temperature diagram or triple T diagram. Uh, this becomes a 550 degree centigrade that is why frequently the cooling rate uh, in the heat affected zone is uh, calculated at the 550 degree centigrade. So, this becomes the temperature of interest at which we would like to calculate the uh, cooling rate uh, during the welding in order to avoid uh, the martensitic transformation tendency. Uh, as the cooling rate at this temperature predominantly decides the end structure and mechanical properties of the weld joint. In, in view of uh, above uh, the uh, possibilities related to the cooling rates, the practical application of the cooling rate equation is to determine the preheat requirement for the plate to be welded so as to avoid the critical cooling rate in the weld and the heat affected zone. So, this is the main application of the cooling rate uh, calculations that uh, we can uh, determine the preheat temperature so that. Uh, uh, the critical cooling rate in the heat affected zone and in the weld zone can be avoided so, so as to avoid the unnecessary embrittlement of the heat affected zone and the weld region.
uh, the two welding parameters that uh, primarily dictate the cooling rate besides the thermal and the dimensional properties of the material being welded are the net heat input is 1 during the welding and the 2 the initial plate temperature. So, for a plate of the given thermal uh, properties and the given thickness, uh, the two parameters like the net heat is being supplied during the welding that is in terms of the kilojoule per mm. Uh, so, uh, so, net heat being supplied during the welding is one of the very important parameters that affect the cooling rate and the second is the initial plate temperature. In general, increase in the heat input during the welding decreases the cooling rate while the increase in initial plate temperature uh, uh, decreases the cooling rate. So, uh, both increase in heat input and increase in initial plate temperatures in general uh, decrease the cooling rate uh, being experienced by um, the weld metal and the heat affected zone uh, at a particular location. In general, increase in heat input decreases the cooling rate while it decreases with the increase in initial uh, uh, initial plate temperature. So, uh, uh, during the welding for a given metal having the specific thickness and the thermal properties. And to calculate the net heat input, uh, the heat input is we generally calculate from the uh, product of the welding current and the arc voltage. Uh, since the arc is moving at a particular speed, so by dividing the welding speed with the product of the welding current and the voltage, uh, we can obtain the net heat input. So, to calculate the net heat input, the V i that is the voltage and the current being used for the welding purpose divided by the welding speed. And uh, this is the amount of heat being generated and if it is a fraction is being transferred to the base metal, then that fraction F is applied may be 0.9 or 0.95 or 0.98 depending upon the, um, the kind of welding process, the different fr uh, fractional value can be used to calculate the net heat input. If you see this equation um, in the V is the arc voltage, I is the welding current and S is the welding speed and F is the fraction of heat generated and transferred to the fraction of the heat generated uh, which is being transferred to the plate during the welding. Now, we know that uh, the heat uh, input uh, uh, significantly affect the quality of the weld joint and uh, the soundness of the weld joint. So, it is important to calculate or to, uh, to know about uh, what heat input is being used during the welding of uh, the heat sensitive materials specifically like the steel plates. So, uh, here we will see one example uh, which will show that uh, how net heat input can be uh, calculated uh, for a given set of uh, the welding conditions. So, if say welding current is of the 150 ampere and the arc voltage is 20, 30 uh, volt and the welding speed is being used of 0.5 mm per second then and uh, say uh, assuming that 80 percent of the heat generated by the arc is used for the welding purpose, then uh, we can uh, calculate the heat being generated using this uh, equation. Net heat, heat generated is obtained simply from the V i that is the arc voltage and uh, uh, the product of the welding current. So, arc voltage multiplied by the welding current gives us simply the heat uh, being generated, uh, but uh, since the arc uh, moves at constant speed or sets at certain speed and of only a fraction of the heat generated by the arc is used for uh, the melting purpose or for the welding purpose and that is why uh, the net heat input is calculated using the F that is the fraction of the heat uh, generated in the arc zone is being used for the welding purpose uh, multiplied by the V i that is the heat generated in the arc zone or arc power divided by the welding speed. So, uh, if you put the values in this equation then 0 0.8 that is the fraction of the heat being used uh, 80 per if the 80 percent uh, uh, of the heat is being used for the welding purpose then 0 0.8 multiplied by 30 that is the arc voltage multiplied by 150 that is uh, the welding current uh, divided by 0 0.5 that is welding speed in mm per second and it will give us the 600 joule per mm and it is convinced uh, normally the heat generated is expressed uh, net heat input is expressed as a uh, 0.6 uh, in kilojoule per mm. So, it will 0.6 kilojoule per mm. To calculate uh, the uh, cooling rate, uh, we need to first consider the thickness of the plate. Uh, 
because it primarily uh, affects the cross sectional area available for the flow of heat of uh, which in turn governs the cooling rate in a big way. Um, that is why uh, the plate thickness is to be uh, is the first thing which is considered for calculation of the cooling rate. So, um, the two different empirical equations have been developed for calculating the cooling rate. Uh, one uh, for, uh, is used for thin plate conditions and another thick plates depending upon the thickness of the plate and the welding conditions being used. So, here, uh, but uh, which plate can be considered as a thick and which plate can be considered as a thin, uh, there is no clear cut demarcating thickness limit to define the plate as a thick or the thin. Therefore, the two criteria are used for uh, this classification of the plate into either thick or the thick thin plates. Uh, so, the two methods have been proposed to take a decision whether to use the thin plate or the thick plate equation for calculation of the cooling rate. Uh, these two criteria are based on the number of passes required for completing a weld joint and the relative plate thickness. So, uh, depending upon the number of passes we need to complete the weld, the plates are ca categorized as a thick plate or thin plate and uh, uh, depending upon the value of the relative plate thickness, uh, relative, uh, depending upon the relative plate thickness value, uh, also we categorize whether the given, whether we should use the thin plate or the thick plate equation. So, if we consider the number of passes criteria, so according to this method, uh, the number of passes required for welding a plate is less than the uh, 6 number of, uh, less than 6, then the plate is considered as a thin and uh, otherwise uh, the, the plate will be considered uh, as a thick plate for, uh, for the calculation uh, of the cooling rates. So, uh, so, according to this method, number of passes required for welding a plate, if these, is, these numbers are less than 6, then uh, the plate is considered as a thin as thick plate for calculating the cooling rate. Uh, uh, so, we can see that this criteria is not very clear because the number of passes required for completing a weld can be significantly governed by uh, the diameter of the electrode which is being used and uh, the groove geometry which is being used. Uh, we know that the for V groove geometry we need to, requ uh, we will require more weld metal to be deposited as compared to the U and the J groups. Similarly, if we use the large diameter electrodes then we will require fewer passes. So, because of this uh, uh, ambiguity related with the number of uh, pass cri criteria, it becomes difficult to, criteria, uh, difficult to categorize whether the plate, whether we should use a thin plate equation or thick plate equation for calculation of the cooling rate for a given uh, welding conditions. So, due to the non-clarity as far as the number of passes required for uh, completing the weld, um, this criteria is not found to be effective because uh, the, with the variation in the diameter of the electrode being used and uh, the variation in the group, ge group geometry, we may require the different number of passes for developing the weld joint. For a given plate thickness, if we use a small diameter electrode, then we may require large number of passes and we may falsely consider uh, the, uh, or uh, we may incorrectly use the thick plate equation and that is why this number of pass criteria is not very not considered very effective uh, for categorizing uh, and uh, using the thin plate or thick plate equations. Therefore, second uh, method uh, which is uh, based on the relative plate thickness is more effectively used. The, this relative plate thickness criteria is considered to be more effective because it considers uh, all the uh, factors uh, which can affect the cooling rate uh, during the welding of a particular location. And these parameters include the heat effect, heat in, in being supplied, thickness of the plate, initial plate temperature and uh, using these parameters we try to calculate the relative plate thickness and if the relative plate thickness at a particular temperature of the interest is found to be below certain critical value, then we consider it as a thick plate, thin plate or uh, otherwise a thick plate. Uh, so, if, if we see here the rel relative plate thickness criteria uses the thickness of the plate, the heat input, initial plate temperature, the temperature of the interest at which the cooling rate is desired and uh, uh, the physical properties of the plate being uh, uh, to be welded. So, the relative plate thickness uh, criteria in, uh, in light of above, we can say it is more logical and uh, this uh, thick relative plate thickness can be calculated using this equation.
this equation the, the relative plane thickness equations is uh, is composed of the h uh, multiplied by the rho c and within bracket t i minus t naught t i is the temperature of interest t naught is the initial plate temperature divided by the h net and uh, the square root of this whole equation so if we see here h is the thickness of plate rho c is the uh, rho is the density and c is specific heat initial plate temperature final temp and the temperature of interest and the heat input. So, since all these parameters can affect the um, property uh, can affect the cooling rate of uh, uh, cooling rate uh, um, and during the welding of a particular location uh, and that is why uh, the relative plate thickness uh, uh, calculation can give a very logical uh, criteria for uh, and uh, taking decision whether uh, we should use the thick plate equation or the thin plate equation for calculating the cooling rates. According to thin plate, uh, thin uh, if uh, based on the so uh, based on the relative plate thickness criteria, thin plate cooling rate thin plate cooling rate equation is to be used when the relative plate thickness is less than 0 0.6, and uh, the thick plate equation is used when the relative plate thickness is greater than uh, 0 0.9 if the value of the relative plate thickness is in the range of 0.9 to the 0.6 to the 0.9, then 0.75 is used as a limiting value to decide the cooling rate equation to be used. Generally, the value uh, if the relative plate thickness is uh, coming more than 0.75, then we use the thick plate equation th uh, for calculating the cooling rate, otherwise thin plate equation is used for the values below the 0.75. So, for calculating the cooling rate, uh, uh, the cooling rate equation for the thin plate is uh, shown in the screen and this is the equation which is used for calculating the thick uh, uh, plates. So, if we uh, see uh, here uh, the h is the plate thickness in mm, k is the thermal conductivity, rho is the density, uh, c is the specific heat. T i is the temperature of interest which is mostly taken as 550 degree centigrade in case of the hardenable steels and T naught is the initial plate temperature uh, in degree centigrade. So, uh, if uh, using the, uh, the these two equations can uh, be effectively used uh, for the purpose of uh, practically calculating the critical cooling rate under the uh, welding conditions and uh, also to determine the preheat temperature that we should use uh, for uh, preheating the plate so as to avoid the critical cooling rate uh, to avoid any kind of the austenite to metastatic transformation tendency so as to avoid the critical uh, so cracking tendency and the embrittlement of the heat affected zone and of the weld metal so uh, we will take up the first application where uh, the cooling rate equations are being used for calculating the critical cooling rate under the welding conditions uh, to determine the critical cooling rate for the steel plate under the welding conditions, uh, the weed on plate approach is used and in this approach uh, uh, the weed on plates are developed using the varying heat input, means heat input is controlled and uh, it is gradually decreased so that in very controlled way cooling rate can be increased. So, on the basis of the thickness of the plate uh, to be welded suitable electrode diameter is first chosen. So, so, the, so, for calculating the critical cooling rate um, on the basis of the thickness of the plate uh, to be welded, suitable electrode diameter is chosen because thickness of plate directly affects the current requirement and which in turn dictates the electrode diameter to be used. So, uh, for calculating the critical cooling rate under the welding conditions, we deposit the bead on uh, plate and for depositing the bead on plate uh, on a given uh, the plate. Uh, we select first the electrode diameter and accordingly we uh, decide upon the welding current to be used and the arc voltage to be uh, used for the for developing the bead on uh, plates. And say if we select the 20 volt uh, uh, and uh, uh, the 200 ampere current and for a plate of 5 m thickness and the initial plate temperature of the 30 degree centigrade uh, for uh, developing the bead on plates. Uh, while uh, the welding speed is uh, varied in very controlled way and say bead on weld uh, are, are developed uh, using the speed first at 8 mm per minute then 9, 11, 12. So, uh, and the means by this way we will be developing the 5 different uh, bead on plates and after developing these bead on plates uh, 
um, uh, at different speeds, the transfer section of the bead on plate is cut uh, to measure its hardness. So, first we will be developing the bead on plate using the selected value of the welding current, voltage and the welding speed and uh, uh, after developing these bead on plates, the transfer section of the beads is cut and the hardness is measured and thereafter hardness versus welding speed plot is made to identify the welding speed above which abrupt increase in the hardness of the weld and the HZ takes place. And uh, this welding speed is identified as the critical speed. Say if we get uh, the welding speed uh, above 10 mm per minute, uh, the abrupt increase in the hardness of the weld and the heat affected zone above which the cooling rate of the weld and the heat affected zone becomes greater than the critical cooling rate, uh, then uh, that uh, speed uh, correspond, uh, then this welding speed results in the cooling rate. Uh, which becomes more than the critical cooling rate and results in the uh, um, uh, uh, austenite to the Martens Rick transformation for sudden uh, increase in the hardness of the weld and the heat affected zone. To understand this, we will use this uh, schematic uh, diagram. So, according to this, uh, say we have one plate of a given thickness, say of the 5 mm, based on this, uh, we select suitable electrode and develop the bead on plate. First bead on plate we are developing say using the welding speed 8 mm per minute and this is the bead which is developed using 1 uh, speed and say for given 20 volt and 200 ampere the welding current. So, using the same uh, current and the same voltage the other beads at somewhat higher speed are developed. Say another weld bead is developed at uh, using 9 mm per minute welding speed. Similarly, we keep on uh, depositing the weld bead at other higher speeds like this. Number of uh, beads, bead on plates are developed at the increasing welding speeds. So, we know that uh, as the welding speed is increased, net heat input to the weld decreases because uh, the H net is obtained from the V i divided by S. Say F is fixed for a given welding conditions and a given welding process, H net uh, sorry fraction of the heat being developed which is being transferred to the weld is fixed say 0.9. So, for a given welding current and the welding voltage increase in speed will simply be decreasing the net heat input. So, if we keep on increasing the welding speed for depositing the different bead on plates, then it will keep on decreasing the uh, heat input. So, decrease in heat input will be increasing the cooling rate and increase in cooling rate will be leading to the development of the different structures. So, if you recall this diagram corresponding to the triple T diagram, so if say the low speed corresponds to the this uh, uh, low speed means high heat input, so high heat input means low cooling rate. This is corresponding to say for example, 8 mm per minute welding speed. If we take up another, this is corresponding to 10 mm uh, cooling rate corresponding to the welding speed of 10 mm per minute. If you take up another one, say this one, it is corresponding to the 11 mm per minute welding speed. So, in this situation, the cooling rate is just crossing the nose of the triple T diagram and will be resulting the transformation of austenite into the martensite. And because of this, we will be getting the uh, very hard and brittle the weld and the heat affected zone. So, uh, wh whether uh, at what speed this condition is being achieved, at what uh, speed the cooling rate is being obtained which is just touching to the nose and resulting in the austenite to the martensitic transformation to obtain this only the different bead on plates are uh, 
obtained. Once these are developed, we will cut the transverse cross section of all these samples and after cutting these, the hardness of each sample is obtained. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and so uh, each uh, transverse section, uh, each sample will give the hardness of the weld and HZ. So, that is obtained and measured. So, what is done? This hardness is plotted as a function of welding speed. Say first corresponding to the 8, then 9, then 10, then 11 and then 12 meter per minute welding speed. And once this uh, uh, and in the vertical axis means in the y axis, we can have the hardness, hardness of the weld as well as the heat affected zone. So, if we try to uh, plot, then say at low speed, uh, we will be having high heat input. So, the low cooling rate will be resulting in the soft structure as the heat speed is increased resulting in the somewhat higher cooling rate will be resulting in the finer structures and then somewhat more finer structure. Suddenly, we see that say at for example, at a speed 11, the cooling rate becomes just greater than the critical cooling rate and because of this austenitic transform from the transformation from the austenite to the martensite starts while in other conditions it was either perlitic or the banetic one. So, under these conditions uh, there will be sudden increase in the hardness and this will result in that here initially hardness was increasing gradually because of uh, the refinement of the structure, but as soon as the cooling rate becomes greater than certain uh, certain uh, critical cooling rate, the sudden increase in the hardness of uh, the weld and the heat affected zone is obtained. So, this is speed at which the uh, sudden uh, increase in the hardness is observed, below that is speed uh, we consider uh, as the critical speed above which uh, the embrittlement of the heat affected zone and the weld will be taking place. So, this speed can be used for determining the cooling rate. So, now we have identified almost all the parameters which can be used for calculating the cooling rate. So, if, if we use the welding speed, welding speed of the uh, uh, 10 mm per minute uh, arc voltage 20 volt and uh, uh, the welding current 200 ampere for calculation of the net heat input. So, the net heat input corresponding to this welding speed, this 200, uh, 200 uh, uh, welding current and the 20 uh, arc volt. So, this whatever net heat input is obtained corresponding to this whatever cooling rate is uh, being developed in the weld region or in the heat affected zone that will be resulting in the uh, critical cooling rate above which uh, the weld will be subjected to the embrittlement. So, this is what we said uh, that the weld bead on plate is developed at the different welding speeds and once the bead on plate is completed at the different welding speeds transfer section of the weld is cut and the hardness is measured. Thereafter, hardness for welding speed plot is obtained uh, to identify the welding speed above which abrupt increase in the hardness of the weld and the heat affected zone takes place. And uh, the, this welding speed is identified as a critical welding speed above which the cooling rate of the weld and the heat affected zone becomes the greater than the critical cooling rate. So, this abrupt increase in the hardness of the weld and the HZ is primarily attributed to the martensitic transformation during the welding as the cooling rate becomes greater than the critical cooling rate due to the reduction in the heat input with the increase of welding speed. So, using the welding conditions corresponding to this critical speed for a given welding plate critical cooling rate can be calculated using the appropriate cooling rate equation. So, in this case if we calculate uh, the net heat input. Uh, then uh, the using equation F say uh, the 90 percent of the heat being generated by the arc is being transferred to the uh, 
plate for development of the bead on plate and the welding voltage 20 and the welding current 200 and a say critical speed identified as a 10 mm per minute, then this will result in the net heat which is being supplied and resulting in the cooling rate which is just critical and above that the austenite to the matter transformation will be taking place. So, here this uh, net heat input comes out to be say 0.36 kilojoule per mm. Then using the relative plate thickness criteria uh, for the given welding conditions, uh, if we calculate the relative plate thickness using the equation of uh, the H uh, multiplied by the T i minus T naught into the C uh, divided by H net and the square root of all this, this will result in the uh, relative plate thickness of the 0 0.31. So, we know that relative plate thickness if it is lesser than the 0 0.6, then it is considered as a, a thin plate and uh, if it is more than 0 0.9, then it is considered a thick plate and uh, the relative plate thickness suggests the use of the thin plate equation uh, for the calculating the critical cooling rate and using this uh, equation for the critical cooling rate. Uh, we can determine the cooling rate which will uh, give us the critical cooling rate say um, uh, after putting the very uh, value of the various um, parameters of the steel say thermal conductivity, uh, density, uh, specific heat, thickness, heat and at heat input, temperature of interest that is 550 degree centigrade and the initial plate temperature say 30 degree centigrade, then we get the uh, critical cooling rate 5.8 degree centigrade per second. Uh, so, just to be safe side, we can consider it as 6 degree centigrade per second. So, we can make sure that how to regulate uh, um, the uh, T naught uh, temperature uh, for a given welding conditions, so as to avoid the temperature uh, cooling, um, so, uh, so as to avoid the cooling rate greater than this uh, 6 degree centigrade. So, um, if we go uh, with the other welding conditions, then uh, uh, we can we can see what heat in input we can give in so that the critical cooling rate can be avoided or what preheat uh, we can use for uh, uh, avoiding the uh, cooling rate so that it is always lesser than the 6 degree centigrade per second. So, similarly these equations can also be used for calculating the cooling rate for a particular situation under the given welding conditions. So, now here we will summarize uh, this presentation which was mainly based on the heat flow in welding and uh, the role of the cooling rate in the welding. Uh, we have seen that how to, we can calculate the cooling rate for the thin plate and the thick plate conditions and uh, how we can use the cooling rate equation for calculating the critical cooling rate in the uh, welding conditions and these equations can also be used for uh, calculating the preheat requirement so as to avoid uh, the critical cooling rate in order to avoid the, any uh, embrittlement and the cracking tendency of the hard nibble steels. However, uh, the cooling rate uh, during the welding of the aluminum alloys especially in the heat affected zone do not play any major uh, role, but uh, the cooling rate in case of the aluminum welds. Uh, results in the finer um, structure or the coarser structure depending upon the cooling rate being experienced. So, uh, the cooling rate uh, conditions are more important for the hardenable steels uh, while in case of the non-ferrous metal systems like aluminum cooling rate uh, in the heat affected zone do not play the much role. So, thank you for your attention.